Five Nights at Freddy's, the indie horror game about killer robots in a pizzeria. The past year or so has been this franchise's busiest time yet. The game FNAF Security Breach got new DLC, a sequel to their VR game came out, and of course the movie came out back in October. FNAF has never been this popular. Okay, that's not entirely true. Let me take you back to the end of 2014, when FNAF 2 had just been released. Let me tell you, the excitement for the third FNAF game was off the goddamn charts. As a 10 year old at the time, which oh my god, this franchise is almost a decade old, this was without a doubt the biggest the series had been, at least in my eyes. Constant teasers for the third game, YouTubers covering every last scrap of info, and of course, fan-made content. There was that one fan-made FNAF 3 trailer that got a lot of traction, but we're not talking about that. Trying to fill that absolutely horrific four-month gap between the second and third game, tons of fan games were made and talked about. Also, you know what's funny? Garden of Ban Ban released games just as quickly as the original FNAF games did, and I don't see nearly as many people knocking FNAF for doing this as they do Ban Ban. I am by no means a Jumbo Josh defender, but anyways. However, one fan game that caught my attention back in the day, as well as the attention of many others, was none other than Five Nights at Freddy's 3. Uh, I mean, Five Nights at Freddy's 3 fan made. I, I mean, the return to Freddy's. I mean, the return to Freddy's classic. Okay, there we go. In late 2014, after the second FNAF game dropped, Tyler Alstrom, who also went by BFP Films 424, released his own game on Game Jolt titled Five Nights at Freddy's 3. This was pretty confusing when it was released, since, you know, it's just straight up called Five Nights at Freddy's 3 before the third game was even released, and a lot of people took issue with that. It was enough to where Tyler eventually renamed it to Five Nights at Freddy's 3 Fan Made, but the confusion was still so great that the creator of FNAF himself, Scott Cawthon, told Tyler that he needed to change change the title. Therefore, the game was eventually titled The Return to Freddy's. I know it's not that uncommon for a FNAF fan game to have some legal issues, but oh my god, it is so funny to be able to say, hey, you remember that one illegal FNAF game? Now this game actually got some pretty big attention. People like Corey Kenshin, Yami Mash, and Riskrim making some fairly big videos on it. You'd think this game was of decent quality, and I thought so too nine years ago, but after revisiting it, this game is bad, pull the gameplay wise and morally. When I began researching for this video, all I knew was that this was a silly little fan game that I like to watch, but oh my god, there was so much more to it. I'm not gonna detail every little thing out, but let's just say that Tyler is not a well-liked figure in the FNAF community. He stole from both the official games and other fan creations, he was apparently generally unpleasant to work with, and he apparently faked his own death to generate hype for a fan game? Listen, I can't find an 100% concrete source on that outside of a few forum posts and YouTube videos, so take it with a grain of salt. That is actually insane if it's true. You know what? I'm holding my own funeral to promote my next Mario horror game video. Hey guys, it's Editing Bup here. While I was editing this portion of the video, I actually stumbled across an official apology from Tyler. Now, I don't know what the general consensus on this was or if it was genuine or not, because I wasn't really actively following the community eight years ago, but I just wanted to include it in the video because I felt it was an important part to this story. Also, I don't know what he meant by apologizing for being incest, and you know what? I don't really want to know, so let's continue with the video, shall we? For this video, however, I'm only discussing stuff surrounding the fan-made FNAF 3 game. There are plenty of deep dives on this game franchise and Tyler on YouTube, so you can go check those out after this video if you're just dying to learn more about f***ing kitty fast cat, I don't know. Anyways, we're just here to talk about a silly robot bear game, so without further ado, let's talk about Five Nights at Freddy's 3, uh, the second version. There's three of these things. So there's three versions of this game, Five Nights at Freddy's 3, Five Nights at Freddy's 3 Fan Made, and The Return to Freddy's, all of which have very small details changed. This includes different intro cutscenes, the designs of the doors, and the removal of Sugar. We will talk about her later, don't you worry. I decided to cover the Fan Made variant for two reasons. One, this was one of the versions I remember seeing, and two, I didn't realize that I played this version until I finished this script. Are you kidding me? Don't worry, I'm not missing anything crazy here, 
but I do want to apologize to the tattered door fans out there because these doors are in fact not tattered. The game opens up with a cutscene where you're in the FNAF 2 office. A slowed ring around the rosy plays in the background as a phone guy call goes on at the same time. Eventually the song ends and Golden Freddy jump scares you. I am so fucking gripped for this story. Also side note, the Golden Freddy jump scare was actually just a recolor of Freddy's from FNAF 1, a great precursor for all the reused assets to come. This game is formatted like most FNAF games. There's five regular nights, a sixth night, and a custom night. There's also a pretty basic title screen. It's actually so basic that it's just the FNAF 2 title screen. That's so crazy. As you can tell, I'm gonna dog on this game a lot. Obviously, you shouldn't go out and harass the creator at all, and I do like to try and be positive about the things I cover, but when your game's just a bunch of stolen, meshed together content, there's only so much positive that I can really say about it. But what I can talk positively about is gamer subs. Are you a night guard and a horrible FNAF fan game who just needs to stay up at night? Gamer subs is the perfect energy drink mix to help with those late nights on the job. Zero sugar, zero calories, normally that means zero taste, but not with gamer subs. There are tons of great flavors to choose from. Personally, I prefer lean. There's even caffeine free variants, and I get those because I, I have an issue with caffeine as it is. Go to gamersubs.gg slash toadbup and use code toadbup to get 10% off your entire your order. If you don't want to spend money, go and get some free samples and try it out for yourself. It really helps support the channel. Anyways, back to the video. Night 1 starts and there's even more stolen fan art, this time a Freddy render that I swear I've seen before. This Wikipedia page says it's from the artist Nexus Drakeson, but I can't find the exact model anywhere so I'm not sure if that's true. Anyways, the newspaper reads that the ever so popular animatronics from Freddy Fazbear's Pizza are fixed, even Foxy, oh goody! The murderer of five children has yet to be found. They also brought back some old favorites. Why did they include this in the newspaper article? I'm not gonna take my kids to your restaurant if you're just like, yeah, the child killer's still around here somewhere, but come see Foxy. Anyways, getting into the first night, you get a taste for what the game has to offer. The office is just the one from FNAF 1, and the cameras are a mix of the FNAF 1 and 2 rooms. There is a puppet, but they just act like the other animatronics. There's no music box involved here. I also vividly remember these two dangly tubes when I watched the game as a kid. I have no clue why that stuck with me, but it did. You have two sets of doors, but they are completely useless, and they won't stop any of the animatronics. It's the reason that the game eventually updated to make the doors look tattered. The tattered door community won big that day. Despite the useless doors, you do have some tools at your disposal. Obviously, you've got the cameras, you have a flashlight that allows you to look into dark rooms, and you have a Freddy mask, which is what you'll be using to fend off every single animatronic. There's also a toxic meter, which is supposed to build up if you use the mask for too long, but for some reason it didn't work for me, I don't really mind though. Fun fact, the toxic meter was actually a scrap mechanic from the second Five Nights at Freddy's game. It was theorized that this was supposed to build up over time as you use the mask, so that you don't use it for too long. Just like this game where it builds up if you use the mask, so that you don't use it for too long. The phone calls are voiced by Tyler himself, and it's mostly just him rambling about like some dude following him? I don't know. He just sounded like some really bored version of Phone Guy, so I didn't really care what he had to say most of the time. Uh, hello? Hello? Uh, oh, hey. Uh, why are you staying here? The first night is fairly dead, with only two animatronics coming to attack you, the puppet and Bonnie. Now, how do I know this for sure? Because unlike, well, every FNAF game under the sun, the animatronics aren't controlled by AI, because every animatronic's movements are scripted. I don't think I've ever heard of that happening before. This essentially just makes the game's difficulty non-existent. Speaking of non-existent difficulty, all of the animatronics attack by entering your office, and you have to put the mask on to get rid of them. You can you can't put the mask on before they enter because the game won't register it as on, and you can't put it on too late. Just have good timing and you'll be fine. It could be pretty inconsistent though, and sometimes you'll use it correctly and just die anyways. With all that said, the gameplay doesn't really deviate much from that. The game is like if FNAF 1 and 2 had a baby, and then the baby was the victim of the bite of 87. The insanely simple gameplay of animatronic enters office and put on mask turns this more into a chore than a game. I barely even looked at the cameras. I waited for a sound cue, let them enter the office, and put on the mask. This combined with all of the moves being scripted led to me just sitting on my phone most of the game playing goddamn Dokkan Battle, just waiting for when the animatronics normally popped up. 
While we're on the topic of animatronics, they sure are here. Freddy, Chica, Foxy, and the puppet just use their designs from FNAF 2. So much for fix animatronics. Bonnie does use the sprite from FNAF 2's Withered Bonnie, but now there's a little face on him. Aww. There's a few more animatronics that are introduced throughout the night. Golden Freddy, Shadow Bonnie, or I'm sorry, Shadow Doug, and Sugar the Cat, which you might recognize, but we'll get into her later. Anyways, let's zoom through these nights, shall we? Night one is super easy. The puppet and Bonnie attack, and that's really it. When the night ends, you're met with a cutscene from inside the Freddy mask, similar to FNAF 2. Night two arrives, and Freddy, Chica, and Foxy are now out, but with no incentive to check the camera other than to see Chica's glorious smile, I just sat there and waited for them to enter my office. This time, the night end cutscene had Freddy in the office. Whoa! Night three is more of the same, except the animatronics are a little more active. This is also where I discovered that if you die to someone, there's a chance you won't know until like 10 seconds later. I guess I didn't mask fast enough for Freddy, but I didn't know that until he jump scared me 8 goddamn seconds after I took the mask off. I died like once or twice, but I eventually pulled through. This time, the puppet and Bonnie make an appearance? Oh my goodness! It's night four time, baby. And also, I failed to mention that for some reason, the song the puppet plays is some Slender Man song, I guess? It holds no relevance, but hey, it's just an example of some good old classic fan-made FNAF 3 stealing. This time, the post-night cutscene has all four animatronics flickering around you, but instead of the puppet, it's just a shadowy version of the puppet? Apparently, this is Shadow Lockjaw and is a big player in the later games, but I just think it's funny that he canonically wears a fedora. Also, this shot of all the animatronics looking at you reminds me of those memes where the souls in Undertale turn on Flowey. Dumb observation, I know, but it popped into my head, so I'm subjecting you to my insane thoughts. Night 5 has arrived, and this time there's actually some differences. There's the introduction of two characters, Golden Freddy and Ghoul Balloon Boy. You deal with them the same way as the rest, use the mask until they leave the room. Unsurprisingly, the Balloon Boy sprite is stolen from the artist Fazboogle, and this particular edit of Balloon Boy has actually been stolen and used in official merch before, which is crazy. Survive the attacks from the new Faz Pals, and you have done it. You have survived the five nights working at Freddy's. Three. You collect your paycheck and you can now access the sixth night, which is once again just the exact same thing but more difficult. Oh wait, how could I forget? Shadow Doug appears on this night. You deal with him by putting on the mask and waiting for him to leave. Oh come on, do anything different! Nothing too noteworthy, the sixth night did take me a little longer to beat, and also I got attacked by the puppet like in half a second. Look at this sh- With the sixth night over, you get the custom night. It's exactly what you think it'd be. It's a custom night where you can amplify the aggression of the animatronics. I don't really have the energy to sit through a boring ass 620 mode, so I'll just draw a windscreen in and pretend that I did it. Now surprisingly, there's one huge detail about this game that I actually didn't encounter while playing, and that's Sugar the Cat. Now, Sugar is another animatronic from this game that was supposed to appear on Night 3, but either due to being unlucky or having the wrong version of the game, I didn't encounter her. Now, if you have any knowledge of the FNAF fan community at all, you might notice that Sugar just looks ever so slightly a little itty bit familiar. It's just Candy the Cat, it's a stolen fan character. One of the largest controversies surrounding this game was that Tyler stole the renders of Candy the Cat, a character from a very popular FNAF fan game called Five Nights at Candy's made by Emil Mako. Apparently, these renders weren't even from the game themselves, they were the original renders before the game was even out. That's fucking wild to steal a character from an upcoming game and just be like, nah, it's mine now. Emil originally wanted the renders to be removed, but apparently Emil eventually just said that Tyler could use them. Tyler removed these renders anyways and sure Sugar entirely, because god forbid he make an original asset to replace it. Sugar didn't even have a proper jump scare, it was just Candy's head pasted onto Toy Bonnie, that was hilarious. And with that, for real this time, this game comes to a close. Let me tell you, when I had the idea to cover a neat little FNAF fan game I remember seeing as a kid, I had no clue what I was in for. The sheer amount of games, lore, and controversy that followed the release of FNAF 3 fan made is kind of astounding and something I don't really think I'm qualified to tackle. I mean, where's MatPat when you need him? Oh yeah, that's right. There's no arguing that this game was bad and lazy and an asset flip, but this game 
existing at all is just a complete spectacle. The whole thing was a pretty unique situation. This random fan game tricked tons of people into thinking it was the third FNAF game, which led to the creator of FNAF itself telling the fan game creator to knock it off. This spiraled into an insane series of games that seem to at least have some passion poured into them. Now, I don't know what Tyler has entirely done or what he's up to now or what the other Return to Freddy games are like, but I'm just hoping he's at least improved after this and enjoys creating games. Just, uh, don't be stealing shit anymore, all right? You know, now that I think about it, maybe the creator was onto something here. I mean, the way this game was made was absolutely genius. In fact, I've been wanting to make my own search engine forever now, introducing Google too. Uh, oh, my bad. Hold on. That's better.